meeting Chris Singleton, the Dublin-born singer-songwriter who had a very rare ear condition. It made him allergic to sound. Now, can you imagine what it would be like to experience excruciating pain every day from everyday noises, things like ringtones, car brakes, even high-pitched voices? Well, the musician Chris Singleton had a personal battle with noise after he was diagnosed with a rare hearing condition, hearing condition even, called hyperacusis. You see, you got that bit right. Isn't that annoying? <laughs> it happens every time, doesn't it? A hearing the, yes. The musician had to put his career on hold after living for more than two years with an allergy to sound. After a series of hearing treatments, Chris returned to the studio to record a new album. Before we meet him, let's take a look at the title track. It's called Lady Gasoline. Tell me all about it. Tell me what you got. I think I'm out of my mind. I think I'm losing the plot. You know you get what you want. But now what you need, it's a funny condition. No, morning, Chris. Morning. Well, of all the jobs to pick, if you've got a problem with noise, you well, became a musician. Yeah, it was pretty difficult. I mean, I guess um, the condition sort of came out of the fact that I was a, a musician. Like uh, a lot of um, singer-songwriters and musicians, I ignored the risks of it, really, when it comes to um, exposing yourself mm. to loud noise. And um, obviously, that's how the, the condition developed and posed all manner of problems, really, when mm. it came to... To music. So what is hyperacusis and how did it affect you? Well basically it's a hypersensitivity to sound. It can be brought on in a number of ways through loud noise or sometimes through a head injury. Um, but effectively it means that everyday noises um, can become you know quite painful. So for example you know things that would be just normal for most people actually start to hurt. So you know ringtones, coffee machines, um, even things like toilets flushing. It, 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 it and they cause you physical pain? Yeah, it caused actual physical in, pain. What, in your head? In, in, in your, your ears, in yeah. Your ears. Gosh. And when did you first notice this? Well, it was kind of in the run-up to my first album, Twisted City. Um, we're kind of getting to the end of the recording process and um, I basically started to um, feel a sort of strange fullness in my ear. and. Um, as time went on, I noticed that this wasn't just while I was in the recording studio. It was starting to happen as I walked down the road or just even, you know, around the house. And it, it just started to, you know, cause a lot of anxiety and a lot of, a mm. lot of problems. Really. And what did doctors say about how you could get rid of it? Have you got rid of it? Well, thankfully, I have got rid of it. But the problem was that it actually took quite a while to get a diagnosis because it's not a very well-known condition. And um, I was basically living in Ireland at the time and I went to countless GPs and consultants all of which basically just didn't really know what the problem was. So um, eventually, when I moved over to the UK, I thankfully got some really good advice from the RNID and excellent treatment on the NHS. Mm. So up to that point, were you wearing earplugs when you were working or what were you doing? Well, that's the thing. I mean, I started to actually wear earplugs in everyday situations to block out the noise. Um, and I subsequently found out that that's one of the worst things you can do because really? it basically, it's like a vicious circle. Um, you, you, you start to kind of block out everyday sounds mm. and your ears just get completely um, unused to sound. And uh, it just makes the problem worse because when you take them out, everything just seems yeah. a lot louder. If you're an adult and you experience hearing loss, it can be terribly isolating, can't it? I mean, it can really affect you emotionally and psychologically. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a strange thing, really, because this is kind of like the opposite of that. You actually develop this total fear of sound and it creates a similar level of anxiety mm. and worry, I think, but a different sort of, of, of worry, maybe. So has this affected your music in terms of what you write and the way you play? Well, I think... I think the, the, strange, uh, the, the most positive way of looking at it in terms of the music is that I never thought I'd get to make this album. I really thought my, my music days were over. And to have actually recorded and released this album, you know, it feels like a mixture of a blessing and a personal triumph. 
And I think when I was recording this album, it gave me a new lease of life. It sort of made me feel that, you know, just really relieved to be able to make music again. And I think the record sounds like somebody who's rediscovering music. It's very energetic, very upbeat, and um, it plays with a lot of different sounds. Yeah. Sounds that I thought I just probably wouldn't get to hear or make again. Yeah. Oh, good luck with it. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Glad you're better. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Chris. Chris Singleton.